Hello everybody. So, we have been on this uh, topic of uh, ultrasonic testing and in last few lectures we have seen uh, different aspects of this particular technique. And if you remember in the last class uh, I emphasized on the importance of uh, calibrating the instrument uh, before you do the test. And I have also shown you uh, some of the standard blocks which are used for uh, calibrating the instrument for ultrasonic testing. So, in today's class uh, we will see uh, what kind of uh, blocks are used and how exactly the calibration is done. Okay? If, if you uh, remember I have also told you before that when you uh, use a standard block uh, for calibrating an instrument you need to follow uh, certain specifications okay, in the sense that the block that you are using it has to be made uh, following some specifications, uh, some particular dimensions and so on. Okay. So, in this case also we need to uh, follow certain specifications and as per those uh, specifications these blocks are made and uh, we can use these blocks uh, to uh, calibrate the instrument. Okay. So, today in this class let us see uh, what these blocks are, how these uh, blocks are and uh, how they are used to do these uh, two kinds of uh, calibrations as I told you before one is distance calibration and another is area. So, these are known as distance amplitude uh, calibration or distance amplitude correction and area amplitude calibrations. Okay. So, these are the two uh, primary types of uh, calibrations that you do for normal probes and then I will show you later also if you use an angle probe then what kind of block you can use and how the calibration is done for the angle probes. Okay. So, today let us go ahead and see how this uh, uh, distance amplitude uh, calibration and area amplitude calibrations are done. Okay. So, if you follow the specifications in this case uh, the block that you have it looks like this. It is primarily a cylinder which has an artificial flaw cut at the bottom in terms of a flat bottom hole. Okay. So, the defect or the artificial flaw that we are going to use in this case is a flat bottom hole okay, which is cut at the uh, bottom of the cylinder. Okay. So, this cylinder has to have a particular uh, dimension as for the specification and this uh, flat bottom hole also has to have a particular dimension. Okay. Okay, so, if you take a uh, section of this cylinder at the bottom, so this is where you have this uh, flat bottom hole okay. and this will have a particular diameter and a particular depth. So, 
So, this is the depth of the hole and the cylinder also will have a particular height and a particular diameter. Okay. For example, uh, in most of the cases a diameter of uh, 50 mm is used and now uh, using this kind of blocks you would be able to calibrate not only the distance, but the area also. Okay. So, when you calibrate distance you need to uh, vary the height of uh, this uh, block keeping the size of the flat bottom hole same. So, if you, when you uh, vary the height then uh, you could vary this uh, metal distance which is this one. So, in case of uh, distance uh, amplitude uh, calibration this metal distance is varied and the size of the hole is kept constant. On the other hand when you uh, calibrate the area in that case uh, the metal distance is kept constant and the size or the area of the hole is varied. Okay. So, this is how uh, by varying the metal distance and varying the size of the hole you can calibrate uh, the distance and the area respectively. Okay. So, this hole uh, is drilled precisely in the center of the bottom surface of the cylinder. Okay. So, you need to vary this uh, metal distance as I said that means you need a number of uh, these cylinders which will uh, provide you different metal distances that means you need a set in order to do the calibration. So, let us see what kind of uh, sets are available uh, that we can use and calibrate. So, there is a series called uh, series B blocks. And in this case uh, this is a set of uh, 19 blocks. Okay. And this is how the cylinders are in this case, the blocks are. Diameter of the block is 15 mm. The flat bottom hole that you have, uh, the size of that hole is uh, it is uh, 20 mm deep. So, that depth that I had shown you in the diagram that is 20 mm and the diameter of the hole is kept same in all the blocks as I said when you do uh, the distance calibration. So, you can choose a diameter uh, from this range and keep it constant. 1.22 and 3.2 millimeter. So, from this range uh, you can choose the diameter okay. and in terms of uh, inches if you see uh, these are written uh, in terms of uh, 164th of an inch and why it is written in that fashion I will I will come to that there is a reason behind that. So, the first one which is 1.2 mm uh, it is uh, 3 by uh, 64th uh, inch 
The second one uh, which is uh, 2 mm, it is uh, 5 by uh, 64 inch and the third one which is uh, 3.2 mm that is 8 by 64 inch. Okay. So, these are the three uh, diameters that you have in this case. So, you select one of them and keep it constant, keep it fixed. Then you vary the metal distances okay, because you are going to calibrate the distance. So, in these 19 blocks, uh, these are the metal distances you have. You have uh, 9 blocks with uh, these uh, metal distances. 1.6 mm, 3.2 mm uh, through all the way to 25 mm in increment of 3.2 mm. Okay. So, in this uh, with these distances uh, you have 9 blocks. In terms of uh, inches you have 1 by 16th of an inch then from 3.2 mm to 25 mm that is 1 8 of an inch to 1 inch. And then you have 10 other blocks with the metal distances of uh, 32 mm to 150 mm in increment of 13 mm or half an inch. So, in terms of uh, inches this is 1 1 quarter inch to 5 3 quarter inches with an increment of uh, half an inch. Okay. So, this is how this set uh, is. So, using these different metal distances that you have, okay, you can have a broad range as you could see and keeping that whole size constant, uh, you can calibrate the distance. Okay. Now, let me come back to this and tell you why it is uh, kept in this fashion, uh, this whole diameter in terms of uh, 1 64th of an inch. Okay. This is to uh, give a nomenclature to these blocks to give some kind of designation, so that you would be able to identify a particular block by a particular number. Okay. So, in order to create that number, in order to create that uh, nomenclature, this kind of uh, dimensions are given in terms of uh, 64th, 164th of an inch. Okay. So, let me tell you how this is used uh, to create that particular number uh, through which you can identify a particular block. First of all, the number is like this, uh, one number first followed by uh, a dash and then uh, four more numbers. So, this is the format, one number dash and then followed by four numbers. So, let us say uh, you have a block uh, which is given a number like this. Okay. 
as I am going to show you now, this is according uh, to that 1 by 64th that uh, we have given to the size of the holes. Okay. So, this first number that you have, the first digit, is the diameter of the hole in terms of 64th of an inch. Okay. So, that means, uh, if it is uh, 3, then uh, you immediately know that uh, the diameter of the hole is uh, 3 by 64 inches or 1.2 mm. Okay. And the last four digits that you have these uh, sp specify the metal distance. in inches. Okay. For example, in this case, uh, these are the four digits. Okay. So, the metal distance in this case is uh, 0 0.75 inch that is uh, 3 quarter of an inch or 20 mm. Okay. So, these uh, numbers are given uh, first of all to identify a particular block, but through these numbers as you saw it just now, you could also get the dimensions of the block both in terms of the size of the hole okay, and in terms of the metal distance. And that is why to get the size of the hole, we had written the size in terms of uh, 1 by 64th of an inch. So, that the number itself will tell you 1, 2, 3 whatever it, it is that it is uh, 1 64th of an inch like in this case the number is 3. So, the diameter of the hole the flat bottom hole that you have is 3 by 64th of an inch. Okay. So, this is how uh, the numbers are created and a number is given to each block. There is one more set which is the ASTM blocks. And like the series B blocks, uh, these ASTM blocks can also be used for calibrating both distance and area. So, this set of blocks consists of uh, a 50 mm diameter cylinder and each of these uh, 50 mm dia blocks will have a 20 mm deep uh, flat bottom hole. And then you can have uh, different metal distances and different uh, hole diameter in order to get either uh, different distances uh, for calibrating the distance or different uh, areas for calibrating the area. Okay. So, this is uh, primarily a set of 10 blocks which can be combined into different distances and different areas to calibrate either distance or area. And out of these 10 blocks, one block uh, is like this. It has a 20 mm deep uh, flat bottom hole uh, with a diameter of 1.2 mm or 3 by 64 
inches and this one has a metal distance of 75 mm. or 3 inches. Then you have 7 blocks which are as follows. All the blocks have a 2 mm diameter hole and the metal distance is varied in this case. So, this will give you 7 different metal distances in these 7 blocks and these are the metal distances 3.2 mm, 6.4, 13, 20, 40, 75 and 150 mm. Okay. So, these are the 7 metal distances that uh, these 7 blocks uh, provide you and there are 2 more blocks one is having 3.2 2 mm diameter hole and a metal distance of 75 mm okay and the second one is having the same hole that is 3.2 mm diameter hole but uh, metal distance in that case in the second block is 150 mm. Okay, so, this is how uh, this uh, 10 blocks that you have it has a different combinations of metal distances and hole sizes also and these blocks can therefore, be used for both uh, distance calibration as well as area calibration. Okay. Now, if you have an angle probe, then in that case uh, this kind of cylindrical blocks cannot be used because for an angle probe you need to calibrate the angle as well apart from the distances. Okay. So, when you have angle probe, uh, the block which is used is known as IIW block which stands for International Institute of Welding. So, this IIW block can calibrate both the distance as well as uh, angle. Okay. So, this is uh, one block uh, that we are going to take up separately because uh, you know uh, we have to discuss in little more detail as to how exactly the angle is calibrated. But uh, for the time being, I just wanted to let you know that apart from those uh, cylindrical blocks which are used for calibrating the distance and the area, you have another block which is primarily used for the angle probes to calibrate the angle, but this can also be used for calibrating the distance as well. And if you only want to calibrate the angle, then uh, there are this kind of small blocks available just for the purpose of calibrating the angle only. So, this is uh, 
a small triangular block like this which will have the angles uh, graduated on the surface. Okay. So, on this phase for example, you could have this kind of angle scales and with the help of this uh, you would be able to read the angle of the beam uh, which is coming out uh, from the probe from an angle probe. Similarly, on this surface also you would have uh, this angle scales. So, depending on uh, what is the angle that you have uh, either this surface and or this surface can be chosen when you are calibrating the transducer for the angle. Okay. Right. So, this is uh, so these are the two types of blocks uh, that you have available for uh, calibrating the angle for a particular ultrasonic transducer and as I said uh, this one uh, we are going to take up uh, separately later on and we will see how this is used to first calibrate the angle and as I am going to show you that time this can also be used for uh, you know. Uh, getting some other information particularly about some of the important parameters like uh, resolution and things like that. This IIW block can also be used for that as well. Okay. So, for today this is all I will have. So, for today I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.